Welcome back! So, last time we discovered how to make this scenario. Now, this scenario was pretty short, there was not really much to it. It was a black screen, it says hello world. That's not actually what we're aiming for. We want to make something a little more expansive. Something that can show characters, show backgrounds, all that kind of stuff. So, first off, I'm gonna close this. We were in the scenario that JSON file, but now we're gonna try to go into our scenario, Greg's Adventure, and we're gonna open this one, template.rpy. Now this file is basically your script. As you can see here, config developer true, I don't know why it says that right now. Uh, oh, uh, that's because uh, it enables the sprite viewer. Uh, it's something I'm going to talk about later. But label scenario template hello world. This was what we saw just now. This is what the scenario currently contains. So as you can see, under the label, we have some text here. Text is uh, categorized by these symbols. I don't remember what they're called, but it's basically shift two. And you create one of these. Uh, it creates two so that you can immediately start writing. So uh, I'm going to create a new line. It's going to say, uh, Greg is going on an adventure and he needs you to guide him. So this should now show up in the game. But obviously, we want to have Greg actually show up. He, he, we need to see him going on an adventure, else it's going to be pretty boring. We're also going to want to add a background so that we can see where he's going. Because an adventure without a background, that's boring too. So, I regret closing the game because we're going to have to open again. Uh, because we're going to want to find the actual. Uh, person we want Greg to be inside this one, Sprite Viewer. Now if you don't have this already uh, showing on the main menu, uh, another command they can use is init python hide config developer true. Uh, I believe this should work, but if it doesn't, use this one. Uh, this enables a lot of tools that allows for better uh, development environment. Uh, Sprite Viewer is absolutely essential if you want to create a uh, scenario because it makes it so much easier. In here you have pretty much everything. You have uh, Mel, you have Maurice, uh, and if you want to, uh, oh, we don't, we're not going to use that. <laughs> you have Setsuna, and I also have a few custom characters installed in my other scenario. We're going to we're not going to talk about custom characters at all, uh, but you can do that too. Uh, we have souls, it's all that, but we want to use Greg. Up here, you can find Greg. Now, luckily, I named this scenario after someone who already exists in the game. Uh, as we can see, this is Greg. He has a few expressions, and important is that you see A underscore zero. A is the actual body. So the pose he stands in, and the numbers are his faces. As you can see, his expression changes. He doesn't have a lot of faces, but who, who really cares? We're not going to use a lot. He also doesn't have any blushing uh, faces. It doesn't matter really. But you can, you can make some characters blush. Uh, Yui is a bit more up there. She has her A pose, and she has her B pose, as you can see changes how she dance and she also has blushing she has little blush marks but going back to Greg we're gonna want to use him as you can see this is his name in the code if you've ever seen the character database uh, I believe Greg is not here sad sorry for Greg but John he's called John Davis in here this is not how you write him in the code not at all you write him as John, simply. Nothing else but John. Greg 
it's called crack. So we're gonna use that. And we're gonna want to use expression uh, oh, he looks cheeky. A3. So how do we show him? We use the command show Greg, which is the person, and then what kind of face we want and what kind of pose we want. Show Greg A3. Also important is that you specify where he shows. There are a few inbuilt, inbuilt positions that you can use, which are center left. Oh, sorry. We'll start with left. There is center left. We have simply center. And we also have center right. And we have right. You can customize these if you go a bit more in depth. But as a starter, I would just recommend using these. We want him in the center. So let's try saving that. And in this, now that we have a developer config true, we can press Shift R. It doesn't work. Oh, oh, it does work. It just, it's a bit buggy. But if we press Shift R. As you can see up here, it says auto reload. This means that every time something related to the game is saved in here, it automatically reloads the game. So if we open it up now, hello world, and there's Greg. He's standing in the center. We could also make him stand at the left. We save again. Oh, and it absolutely crashes. <laughs> okay, let's just open it. Sometimes it's a bit wonky. We open it again. There we go. Greg's adventure. Uh, let's hope he's standing at the left. He's standing at the left. Greg is standing at the left, which is good. We now know that show Greg a3 at left, but now we want him to change. We don't want him to have this happy expression anymore. So we simply show Greg a zero this time, and we don't specify where he's located because he's already located at the left. We don't want him to change his location. He should stay at the left. And Greg was very happy. Let's save that. And we don't have auto reload on right now, so we shift R once again because I opened a new window. And there we go, he changed his expression. Now we also want to show a background. How do we show a background? Well, scene BG launch. Uh, I, I, now you're gonna probably gonna have to look up all the kinds of backgrounds that are already inbuilt in the game. I can show you that in another video where we go a bit in depth in the asset browser, which is another scenario that the developers have given us so that we can easier find the stuff that's already in the game. But for now, we're just gonna be using BT launch and say he was located in the launch area. You save that. It reloads the script automatically because of auto reload. And boom. But wait, Craig's gone. Where the heck did he go? That's because scene is basically like a reset button. It changes the scene entirely. It changes, it hides all the characters. They are gone. So we're going to have to show him again. Show Greg a zero at left. And because he's gone, we're going to have to specify where he should be located again. Save. And this is already, this is always the boring part about making scenarios, waiting for the game to reload. As you can see, he's not actually there. Why is he not there? 
It's because we are currently in this line. It hasn't reloaded this one. You see, the, the game basically goes down. It starts here, goes down here. Hello world. Then you have to mouse click. It goes down here. You don't have to mouse click here because it's, it's a command. It's not actually text. It goes down here. It has executed this command and it pauses here. And then you press, uh, you click again. It goes down here. It executes everything between here. It shows Greg. Greg was very happy. We clicked again. It showed the scene. But we added this after we got here. We, ad we added this after we got here. So this didn't actually load. Now this is an important concept to understand that we're going down the list. And if you're uh, down here, this stuff up here is not going to automatically load. It's not going to execute anything up here. So if we go back... Oh, there he is. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but it's something you're just going to learn. It's something that pretty much all code languages uh, use. Uh, and it's just something you're going to have to get used to. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye.